How you doing? I'm back again. This time I'm going to be showing you how to change the and service the uh, front brakes or disc brakes on an LDV Maxxis. This video can be applied to any car that has disc brakes, they're all pretty similar. Um, so it can be used as a general guide, and as you can see by my face, and this is not makeup. This is, I have already done the previous video on how to do the back brakes, that's why I'm already oily. Um, and yeah, let's get started then. As a little disclaimer and a warning, obviously, you know, be safe when you're doing this, make sure you know you've got the correct equipment. There may be a lot of swearing, anger, and uh, wanting to burn your van or car, but don't do that because it never goes well. And uh, you might set yourself on fire. That's not a very, that's not a very good experience. Um, and you'll be fine. Um, if you really don't know what you're doing, you don't know a spanner from a screwdriver, you're asked from your elbow. Then I would probably suggest that you don't try this. Only try it if you feel confident that you can do it. But yeah, so let's get started and I'll show you what tools we're going to be using. So see, this is the front wheel of the van. We are going to need a G-clamp or a device like this uh, to wind the brake pistons back. Obviously, you need a new set of brake pads. Obviously, when you do when you do obviously one axle, you have to do it on both axles. So for example, if you're doing the this front wheel, you have to do the other front wheel at the same time. I've already done the other front wheel. We need a 12, 12 mil spanner. We need a 13 mil spanner. And so this thing is it's, uh, you can't really see it because it's pretty knackered, but it's copper grease. It's the, the grease you use on brakes. We also need a jack, as you can see. I've got my jack underneath there, one that can take the super weight of the vehicle. And obviously something, you know, uh, to remove the wheel with, so wheel brace, the nuts on here are 22 mil. I don't know what they, if you're doing it on the Maxxis or a different car. And as you can see, somewhere suitable, make sure the jack is on a structural point of the vehicle like it is. I've got it on the, the underneath the suspension joint there. And, uh, and obviously if it's for your own safety, you can use axle stands and stuff, I'm not going to bother. Um, because I live on the edge. And uh, make sure obviously the handbrake's on the bands and gear, so it's not going to go anywhere. So the first thing we're going to do is, while well, obviously the van or whatever you're working on is still on the ground and hasn't been jacked up, we're going to uh, undo the wheel nuts ever so slightly. So as you can see, I already done this one. I've obviously taken, undone it, taken the tightness out, and just undone it um, a, f a little bit, you know, like half a turn or so. Just obviously, we, we don't need to take those out fully yet, and until the van's been jacked up. And the reason you won't want to do it when it's jacked up is because obviously the wheel will spin, and then it'll be very difficult to apply force to it to get it off. So just undo them, get the um, get the tightness out of them so they're loose and then leave them done up like that for the time being before you jack it up. So now I'm going to proceed to jack the van up. There we go and as you can see I've jacked the wheel up. There's a little bit of space underneath it. That's all you really need just to make sure that it's obviously free and spinning. And now I'm going to take the wheel off. Right, now the wheel is off we have actually what we want to get to which is the braking system, or disc brakes. As you can see on the back there, there is one nut here, which is 12 or 13. The other one was a bit mixed up on my side. And you also have one here, which is usually 13. Obviously both of these need to be undone. So we can release this part, which is holding in the brake pads, which we want to change. Just using the good old chit smacker hammer as we've seen before. Make sure obviously you're doing it the right way round, you know. Obviously it's, it's in reverse, so you have to make sure that you're loosening it, not trying to tighten it. There we go, we have a few good hits of the hammer. Loosen up. And then we're gonna do the bottom one now. I'm sorry you can't really see it. loosened enough we can get out of our fingers there we go and that's that out so that's the one I've already shown you around the back uh, the top one just needs to be loosened which it 
is. So as you can see now, the bottom bolt is out. The top bolt's still in, but it's been loosened. So obviously what we can do now, we get the old shit smacking hammer. It's very good, like the best tool in the universe. And we can, I can show you. I know we want to be hitting this part here, but gently. Be careful not to hit this part, and you just want to hit this part. Any gentle taps. Don't want to break anything. There we go, and it's come loose now. There you go, so with a bit of tapping that's come loose, and now that lifts up like that. You can actually take this off now. Do it with one hand. There we go. And rest it up here. See, there is a brake hose attached to it, so don't make, don't let it drop or anything like that because it's a heavy thing, and also you don't want to break the brake, ugh, break the brake hose. I can't even fucking speak. So leave that to rest up there, so it's not going to go anywhere. And then you see the old pants are in there. These ones have definitely seen better days because they are uh, very thin. You can probably see. And what we're going to do is we're going to take them out. So I'm just going to use this to get them out, which is the old ratchet, no, ratchet, lever bar. And you may have seen from the uh, other video about drum brakes, obviously being careful not to damage the disc while you do. You can't be, you don't want to be scratching that. So you can just work it in there. They should come out, they shouldn't be in there too hard and then obviously you've got one behind it as well and there we go there we go look and obviously as you can see the difference how worn down they are compared to how thick the new ones are what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to push those pistons back in because otherwise with the new pads on there it's not going to fit back on so what you need to do is you need to get your g-clamp and i'm going to set up the phone in such a way that i can use both hands right so you want to get your g-clamp and wind it all the way and then you want to plop it on over the piston obviously there's a hole inside the piston so you need to wind it in quite a bit You can actually get proper tools uh, designed for doing this job, but G-clamp does the job as well. If it doesn't seize up while you're trying to use it. There we go, so that's there now. So as you can probably see, if I wind that back in, Start to push the piston back in. Obviously, you get the gist of how that works. So, I'm going to go ahead, wind that one back in, and then I'll be back in a second. As you can see, that's now wound back in, and obviously the other one isn't. Um, what, what you have to be careful of is when you wind this one back in, this little bastard will pop back out. So, what I usually do is I'll use something like that. A socket pop that in the way and there you go as you can see also obviously I've created a block so that can't be pushed back out anymore while I'm winding this one back in so I've got my G clamp again yep hopefully I can show you a bit more detail this time so there's the obviously the piston blocked up the other one and then I'm going to get my G-clamp, pop it over the edge as you can see and it's going to pop down like that and also we've got to wind her up. See there's a hole in the middle of the piston so it needs to be wound up until it meets the bottom. Unfortunately this is a bit of an all shitty G-clamp so it gets a bit 
seized sometimes. And obviously we're gonna wind this piston back in, in flat like the other one. So like that one. And where we put this blockade in here, that's gonna stop that other piston coming back out. Because if you don't block it out, that little bastard will come back out. He's a bloody bastard. As you can see, now both pistons are wound back in and that will give us enough space for the new pads. And I also just noticed that something's leaking and I believe it's brake fluid because I think we're pushed the pistons back in obviously. The excess fluid has come out the top of the container on the LC in the engine bay. So, but that's not too much of a problem. Um, we'll just check that out later and we'll carry on. So what we need to do now is we need to get the new pads, wherever the fuck I put them. Here they are. And I'm just going to open them up. Right there, sorry about that. Phone ran out of battery. I'm not using my normal phone at the moment because I haven't got it, so I'm using this one. It runs out of battery very quickly. Anyway, so you've got your got the first pad on. Got the second pad. Obviously, it's the same as that one, just in reverse. And I'll just see if I can show you it from behind. Clip it in like what? Well, push it in like the other one. It should just. So I know you can always get the. Shit smacker <laughs> and to give it a gentle tap to get it into place. There we go. They're both in place now. All good. And you see they're both sat in there nicely. So you need to make sure, I don't know if I explained that, but then you need to make sure that clip is at the bottom and obviously these springy bits there. And on that one, obviously we're on the top. There doesn't need to be a clip in this one. So now we can reassemble it. So what I would do is I'd get the copper grease, which I mentioned earlier, and let's say we can, obviously on this bit, again, and then give it a nice coating on there. There we go. And then on this one, you can just pull it out. Okay, and we could do the same for this one. Try not to have grass in it. That would always help. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And just give that a nice coating. Right, once you've given that a nice coating, that can go back in there. There we go, just make sure the seal goes over at the end. That's back in there. And obviously you've given that bit of coating, then you can take it. You can take the caliper itself. Sorry, sorry, hold the phone where you can actually see it. There we go, so you want it like that. I'm going to pop that in there. And then bring it so back round onto the brake pads, as you can see, and then push it all the way down, see, just make sure this bit here needs to be pushed in, and, that'll, and that's lined up now, and then that's lined up and ready for the bolts to go back in. So get your bolt, so we're going to be putting it in this here, this over here, make sure it's lined up. Jiggle it about to get it lined up. There we go. So that's that one back in there. Obviously, this one hasn't moved, it stayed there. So now we can do them up. 
as now as you can see they're done up and ready to go on this one uh, when it got tight I just used the hammer gave it a gentle tap to get it done up don't do it out too tight because otherwise you'll end up snapping the bolt and obviously with this one at the top that one will always spin so you just do it you can just tighten it up until it until it feels obviously like so for example as you can see it still turns but it's because it's the internal part turning but as long as obviously you if you put a bit of force on it and it won't move that's fine and that's that'll be fine and once those two bolts are back in and obviously tightened and then that's it you're done new pads are in and that's all you need to do um, now we can put the wheel back on so when we put the wheel back on I'll obviously get um, get the bolts and once just plop the wheel on put all the bolts in finger tight then I'll get my ratchet or whatever I'm using and I'll just pinch them up I'll just pinch them up a little bit tight so on all of them so it holds the wheel on there then I would let the jack down and then once the once the vehicle is down then i would get the bar obviously the ratchet bar or whatever you use and then give them up give them the full tie up and uh, obviously any wheel that you've worked on make sure that you've obviously done them all up properly and obviously gone over them again and tighten them again for safety reasons and obviously once you have done the work on the vehicle um always make sure so there we go as you can see the van is still on the jack I've just pinched the wheels up tight with the spanner I'm using just to make sure that the wheel stays on and in place while I'm doing it and so now we can let the van down obviously before you've let the van down make sure that you've left nothing else or you're not underneath or you've left somebody else underneath there because it's never a good thing and once it's safe then you can release the jack and now the van is back on its own weight and its own wheel you can go ahead and do the wheels up properly with the proper force also uh we used uh this in the video earlier which is copper grease which is designed for brakes um sorry i didn't explain that actually i explained where you needed to put it but i didn't explain why you needed it so basically the reason why you use copper brakes uh blah copper grease on the brakes is because obviously the caliper system moves as you can see on those the bits on the round bits of metal the sliders and obviously it keeps it greased up keeps it so it can move freely and if you don't have that on there it can get stuck and obviously it can pull one of the pads in so obviously one of those one of those pads will get worn down quicker than the other or it can obviously cause the brakes to bind so they're holding on slightly which ends up obviously with a hot wheel and it can make the make it smoke and everything obviously it's not not very good so that's why you use the copper grease to keep it greased up to keep the um keep the caliper moving freely and uh, yeah so i thought i'd just explain that because i like to make sure people know if i'm going to do the video you know also i will be doing a video on how to bleed brakes because i need to do it to my van anyway so I won't be coming up today because i've already done all four wheels and i'm pretty tired and it's cold outside and I just want to go back in now um but i will be um, loading a bleed and how to bleed the brakes video soon if you need to see it so keep that in mind right so that's the end of this video um, that's everything done obviously once you've done the work always make sure that the brakes are working fine you know go in there press the brake pedal make sure the brake pedal still feels like it did make sure it's still it doesn't go all the way to the floor for example because otherwise you may have to re-bleed the system um, obviously don't just jump in the car and drive off somewhere because that could be dangerous Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this helped out. And if it did, then like and subscribe and all that old loveliness. And I'll see you next time.